Hello everybody and welcome to the weekly look at the best-selling light novels in Japan. This week we're looking at October 9th to the 15th of 2023. Let's get to the list. At number 10 with 3,037 copies sold, volume number 4 of Strike the Blood Append. Now the main series is about Kojo Akatsuki used to be an ordinary high school boy, but that was before he became the fourth primogenitor, the most powerful vampire of all time. Worse, he doesn't even remember how it happened. Middle schooler Yukina Himaragi, meanwhile, is the attack mage sent to observe him and to stop him if he goes out of control. But was it really a good idea to send a cute girl to observe a massively powerful vampire boy whose abilities activate whenever he gets aroused? And on an artificial island populated with all manner of demonic individuals, each with their own designs on the fourth primogenitor? Now, the original series is complete and is available in English from Yen On. Uh, doesn't look like they have picked up this append series, which, as far as I can tell, are side stories set during the events of the main series. At number 9, with 3,038 copies sold, volume 21 of Wandering Witch, The Journey of Elena. And specifically, this is the volume 21, which included a drama CD. What's your favorite story? Does it have a hero who slays a dragon and saves a princess? Or a child of prophecy destined for greatness? Well, my favorite story is a little different. It's the tale of a witch who travels the world, seeking nothing in particular. With no quest of her own, she's free to wander wherever the wind takes her, adding a few pages to the story of whomever she meets before setting off on her next adventure. At the end of her travels, the witch takes on an apprentice who will one day begin her own journey. And so the cycle continues, or so the story goes. Now, the witch who starts the story anew, who could she be? This one is officially being released in English by Yen On. Um, the drama CD, uh, I do know at least with this volume, uh, it's I think four short stories uh, penned by the author and is actually acted out by the voice cast from the anime. At number 8, with 3,161 copies sold, Volume 3 of Konosuba, God's Blessing on This Wonderful World, Detour. Game-loving shut-in, Kazuma Sato's life as a young schoolboy in Japan abruptly comes to an early end. Or, at least it was supposed to. When he opens his eyes, though, he sees a beautiful goddess that offers him a once-in-an-after-lifetime chance to be reborn in a parallel world. The catch is that the world is violent and threatened by a growing evil. Fortunately, he can choose any one thing to bring with him. So, he chooses the goddess, Aqua. And so his adventure with his gorgeous companion begins. If he could just get enough money and food to survive, keep his goddess out of trouble, and avoid grabbing the attention of the Demon King's army. This one, the main series again, is complete and is licensed and available in English from Yen On. Uh, these side story volumes, the Detour volumes, I don't believe have been picked up yet in English. Although there are a couple, there is at least one or two other spin-off side story volumes that Yen On is releasing. At number 7, with 3,192 copies sold, Volume 3 of Even If You Say You Don't Love Me, the Count's daughter, former demon lord, becomes happy being pampered by a serious military officer. Oof, those titles. I probably won't love you. On the first night of their arranged marriage, Abigail is suddenly told by her husband that he won't love her. She panics, wondering, does that mean he won't feed her? A Count's daughter, 
who was once a demon lord oppressed by her family in her previous life, becomes happy as her serious military officer husband pampers and feeds her. This is a fresh and unique pampering love story. Uh, this one is not licensed officially in English. Um, yeah, that title, though, pretty much tells you everything you need to know. At number six, with 3,670 copies sold, volume 19 of Is It Wrong to Try to Pick Up Girls in a Dungeon? In Orario, fearless adventures band together in search of fame and fortune within the monstrous underground labyrinth known as Dungeon. But while riches and renown are incentive enough for most, Belle Crenell, would-be hero extraordinaire, has bigger plans. He wants to pick up girls. Is it wrong to face the perils of Dungeon alone in a single-member guild blessed by a failed goddess? Maybe. Is it wrong to dream of playing hero to hapless maidens in Dungeon? Maybe not. After one misguided adventure, Belle quickly discovers that anything can happen in the labyrinth, even chance encounters with beautiful women. The only problem? He's the one who winds up the damsel in distress. And this series is available officially in English from Yen On. At number 5, with 5,883 copies sold, volume 12 of When I Was Transported to Another World, I Found Myself in the Mountains. Instead of seeking strength, I chose comfort. While reserving a spot for watching fireworks, the protagonist, Jin, is suddenly caught up in a hero summoning by a god and is transported to another world. As compensation for being involved, he receives multiple cheat skills and items like a house from the god. His goal is to live a safe and comfortable life without getting involved with his sister, the hero, who was summoned with him. Can Jin truly enjoy a comfortable life in this different world where spirits and monsters roam? At number 4, with 7,866 copies sold, volume number, well, it's technically volume number 3, but... <laughs> Is it wrong to try to pick up girls in a dungeon, Familia Chronicle, episode Liu, volume 2? So, the Familia Chronicles... There's three of them. This is the third one. But specifically in terms of focusing on... They focus on specific characters. And this is the second one that's focused on Liu. These are fragments of history woven by the Divine Familia. I'm going to see you, Lady Astria. As the Labyrinth City is abuzz with preparations for the war game between Hestia and Freya, Liu leaves the city alone. Her destination is the distant east, the sword-making city. She heads there to meet the goddess waiting for her, to seek power and to move forward in her own timeline, carrying with her the determination of five years. However, I'll never accept you. She clashes with the juniors who admire the goddess of justice. Furthermore, Astrea doesn't allow her to return, and she's told to stay in the sword-making city. Liu, can you tell me your answer? Once again, her sense of justice is tested in the third installment of the Chronicle series. So as I said, Familia Chronicle, it's a spin-off of Don Machi. We do actually have this available in English. The first two volumes have been licensed and released, so I figure this third one will be coming out eventually, and that's all from Yen On. At number 3, with 9,217 copies sold, Volume 3 of The Fiancé of the Minazuki Family. High school first-year student Rika Minazuki loses her reason to live due to the last words her beloved father left her on his deathbed. However, on her 16th birthday, a young man claiming to be the head of the main family appears, announcing he has come to take Rika, his fiance, with him. I believe that even in a marriage bound by such blood ties, it's possible to fall in love, he says. Rika finds a glimmer of hope in his words. Descendants of a celestial maiden, the Minazuki family 
bearing the fate of a unique lineage, the two begin their genuine love journey. At number two, with 9,636 copies sold, volume 14 of The Apothecary Diaries. In the East is a land ruled by an emperor, whose consorts and serving women live in a sprawling complex known as the Ho Gong, the Rear Palace. Mao Mao, an unassuming girl raised in an unassuming town by her apothecary father, never imagined the Rear Palace would have anything to do with her, until she was kidnapped and sold into service there. Though she looks ordinary, Mao Mao has a quick wit, a sharp mind, and an extensive knowledge of medicine. That's her secret, until she encounters a resident of the palace at least as perceptive as she is, the head eunuch, Jin Shi. He sees through Mao Mao's facade and makes her a lady-in-waiting to none other than the emperor's favorite consort, so she could taste the lady's food for poison. At her lady's side, Mao Mao starts to learn about everything that goes on in the rear palace. Not all of it's seemly. Can she ever lead a quiet life, or will her powers of deduction and insatiable curiosity bring her ever more adventures and ever more dangers? And this one is licensed officially in English. <coughs> and this one is officially available in English from J Novel Club. And actually, funny enough, was just announced that it's coming out in print from Square Enix Books in English, but they're using the J-Novel translation, so I don't really know what that's all about, but they literally just announced that, I think, yesterday or the day before. So if you've been waiting for this one in print, it's going to happen. Finally, at number one, with 14,734 copies sold, volume 20 of Homes of Kyoto. Half a year after moving to Kyoto, high school girl Aoi Mashiro brings her late grandfather's old scrolls to Kura, an antique store nestled in Kyoto's Teramachi Sanjo shopping arcade, for an appraisal. One thing leads to another, and she winds up working there part-time. The manager's son, Kiyotaka Yagashira, nicknamed the Holmes of Kyoto, is uncannily perceptive, and together they solve strange cases relating to the antiques brought to them by clients. And this one is also officially released in English by J Novel Club. So those are your best-selling light novels in Japan for the week of August 9th to the 15th of 2023. A lot of spin-off novels on this list, and of course Donmachi occupying two spots with its main series release and also a spin-off. I think I read somewhere that there's supposedly going to be a new Donmachi book released every month this year, so I'd expect a couple more before we hit 2024. <laughs> I mean, I, I guess that 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 author Omori is just what a beast for writing. Anyway, um, so what did you think? Are any of these favorites of yours? I mean, we have a lot of them actually licensed in English. Let me know in the comments down below, and join me next week when I'll be back here counting down the top ten once more. In the meantime, thanks for checking out this video. I look forward to seeing you in my next one. Till then, bye-bye for now.